obviously you're working. Let's jump in for a second and talk about this movie that yeah, you sure. are in. So it's called Fifth Borough. Mm -hmm. And so what are you friends with Steve? Steve is a friend of yours because he did, he made the documentary Wasted Talent about you, right? right? Right. So you guys go way back or what? No, um, a friend, Noel Ashman, um, you know, called me up and I've known Noel for many years and he thought it would be good for me to take a meeting with Steve that he was a, you know, uh, a retired member of law enforcement and uh, he wanted to do a documentary and he has the money. And so and this, has, but you were worried about the documentary before because it was Chaz and it was bad timing. Right, but now you have, about this one? you have a cop. You know, like how, you know, because it was a, because he was a former member of law enforcement, no one could ever say it was a puff piece because it's like two sides telling the same story in a way, you know what I mean? And um, so I met Steve, obviously he was probably concerned and more, you know, let me meet this kid and see what he's like because I hear nothing, but you know, when you read about me, it's not gonna, come on, you know? Yeah, I have to say, it's rough out there for you. In yeah, it the, is. When you read about, you know, I, I yeah, think- but that stuff fuels the fire inside. You don't break me down. Too strong, come on, too strong. I really am. But you know, are there uh, other, like, is there anybody covering one thing that scares angle. me in life, one thing that scares me in life is cancer. Anything else? No, nothing scares me. Why cancer? Years, I don't know why. It just, it's just so dark when I hear that word. Did somebody have it close to you? Oh, I've many family members, and just I've seen the way people change, the way they get cancer, and just the way it eats them alive. Even when it goes away and it's in remission, you know it can still come back. So the rest of your life, it'll be right in the yeah, end. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Any yeah. little thing you'll feel, do I got cancer again? Cancer scares me, it really does. Because you know what it is? Look at Steve Jobs. You know, all the money in the world, he couldn't, he couldn't be pancreatic cancer. So it's just, it's, it's a death sentence. When but you I get think Steve Jobs though, like decided he wanted to use alternative medicine and like didn't really get the treatment that he could have gotten right away. Right? Isn't that the story? I'm pretty sure that's how it went down. I don't know if it, I think he would have lived longer than your average person, but it, you're not beating that. That's never going to stop. It, when it's in the pancreas, it's it's stage four. It's already went through. You're done. And that scares me so much. Scares me so much. Do you like, like or do you stay up at night thinking about it or what? It's a silent killer too. You don't know. You could go to the doctor for one thing and they'll say, oh, what the hell is that? How did I not know about that? And then it's like in stage four. It's like, how did we not see this? There was no symptoms. There was nothing. And now it's like, here it is. Now the doctor just told me I got six months. You got HIV, all these things that we thought. You can live with all that. You can live with all that. You know, not, not cancer. Yeah. So you, I feel like you know a lot about a lot of different things. Like, that's why I think when I asked you, do you read a lot? Because I feel like you, you seem like you read a lot. Do you, or are you getting a lot of, you like, or you have like a desire for knowledge or something? Am I do, I, right? I love it. I love, that's why I went to school while I was in prison. Uh, I, I love, love knowledge. It's like, I mean, I mean, just, I remember like when I was in prison and just reading certain things and just like, oh, this is what they were talking about. And it was like that sentence, that, you know, eight year sentence. Like I didn't, I put it to good use. Like I came out so much better of a human being. I accomplished so much. And then I realized maybe it's because I'm in a controlled environment and I need to keep that control in my life. Not necessarily control. Structure. 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 So were you like, what were you like as a kid? Like very into knowledge and stuff? Oh, I was always a great student. I was bad, I used to get thrown out of schools, but I would fight and stuff, but I was always an honorable student with ease. Like I like to learn. You know what it is? I remember things, I'm, I'm a retainer, I retain. It's like, what's the use of reading if you don't remember what you read? I remember a lot. Like my mother to this day will ask me what the, f I'm good with numbers too. That's why I know dates and I remember all that stuff. Phone numbers. Cause once I see it once, boom, it's right here. It's like, shh, it's like took a picture. So it's like right there. So my mother will say, Lena, what's the, what's the phone number for this pizzeria? Or what's the, oh, four, seven, six, two, one, six, two. So I was saying, you know, like seriously, so I say, but I, I know that I have that gift and I'm blessed and I use it. What's the use of ha having that gift and not using it? The saddest thing in life is wasted talent. You know? <laughs> it's, 
it's really so perfect though it's true like it's it true. is such it is a truth like right i mean i don't know if that's the saddest thing in life but it is it does apply but so you well, have talent what you're saying is you i mean i'm not saying what you're saying but obviously well, that's a talent to be able to retain things like yeah. that it's definitely a talent yeah it's i mean i think so Right. But it seems like you don't just, you don't just retain details, but you have like a thirst for knowledge, right? That goes beyond it. So they're remembering everything. That's a skill or a talent or whatever. Um, but you, you wouldn't really use it if you weren't that interested in knowing about life and the world, which it seems yeah. to me like you are. I had to, I knew that I really had to really step it up and really because I knew when I came home, I knew that I'd be doing a lot of interviews and I knew that I really had to articulate myself well yeah. to contradict any other perception and what people had already read about me. And I took the stand in my own trial and I literally ran circles around the district attorney. That's so why I'm here right now. So ran you mean circles around Terry Gottlieb like this. She was right here and I was going like this. That's what I did to Terry Gottlieb. So Such a so but much you, fake evidence it's ridiculous and i still beat them okay but you worked on how you would appear like how you'd be able to articulate what you needed to ahead of time right. you're like i bet so how did you do that what did you well, do i learned the law did you see i learned the law because i have to be able to know the law and how it applies to me to be able to explain to you why this is this i'm, I'm curious too like I would imagine because of everything and the way that you, what has been written about you or said about you, like you must be like, wait, I can't. Can do I just anything. step out for one second? Of I course. just want to get a quick protein bar. I gotta Please, eat. of course. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, you got it. So, uh, okay, what, what I was. We were talking about Steve. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about Steve. So, you, okay, so Wasted Talent, you were okay with that. He's it my was boy, you know? I really, I really got love for Steve. Um, initially going in, like, you know, I'm like, this guy, you know, he's a. I didn't know, is this guy trying to fuck me? Not that way. <laughs> is this guy trying to fuck me over? Is he trying to like come at me in a way where it's gonna be nice and then when we do this film and he chops it up, it's gonna make me look like a fucking jail junkie piece of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, how do you trust him? I don't, when I first meet him. I don't know who this guy But you is. took the chance just because- Yeah, because yeah, just... I, I didn't have to commit to anything. I said, let me meet the guy. I, I sat down with Steve for like five minutes and I knew what kind of guy he was and I knew I was in good hands. And I said, let's do it. Let's okay, do it. And you feel like it was fine. Like he didn't screw you. He gave you the, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve's still, still my friend to this day. Right. Okay. So then I he made he me even this much. I would not even talk to him. Right. So then he, so that he made that movie and that came out in like 2018, I think. Um, and that's, that was called Wasted Talent. And it's basically just a documentary about about like you, I guess, right? I mean, it doesn't yeah, really my, cover my, your whole my rise, life. My rise, my fall, and yeah. my, as I'm rising again. Okay, and so and so now, and then he wrote another movie, I guess. Did he write this movie? I don't even know, Fifth Borough, but he- Fifth Borough, he did write it with John Bianco. Okay. Who's a very good friend of his. Okay, and so they wrote this new movie and he is, uh, I guess, the lead in it as well. I talked to Tara Reed the other day too, um, who plays his wife. And then uh, your cast is one of his friends. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that, how'd you feel about that? I mean, I know you're eating right now, so I'm sort of reluctant to ask you a question. No, 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 go ahead. I'm... But, okay, so. Uh, no bugs. Okay. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just gonna keep talking and then I guess I'll eventually have to turn it into a question but uh so the I guess the story goes that the um so Steve is uh married to Tara who's a cop and then their daughter who's a teenager is sick she needs they need cancer. money she has cancer she, she has cancer cancer drug to slow down the spread of the cancer and he's got to go back to his old ways and go back on the street when he teams up with his guys and they start, you know, doing robberies and heists and things like that and knocking stuff off. And yeah, it's a clever premise. It's an interesting premise, I think. The the whole Absolutely. plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So you get to come in there, and uh, again, it's one of those things where I see you as you're doing your thing, and as I said, I had that thought in the middle of watching it that you could have played De Niro in like a million movies, a younger De Niro, like whoever De Niro's character was, in like any number of movies over the years. You know, but just say yeah, no, no. I mean, that's that's the that's why I got that wrong step. You know. So yeah. So uh, 
what do you want to do now? You want to do uh, more acting, filmmaking, what? Um, actually, I got a couple things going on right now. I got a few films coming out um, as well. I got one. I don't know if you follow me. You have Instagram. You, I post I a little clip from something. Oh, so weird. I don't even think I follow you on Instagram. I will do that today. Yeah, I, this, uh, I did this film called Made in Mexico also, where I play a, a Mexican cartel guy with, with an accent and everything. They pay you up, you know, like this. Oh, I forgot to do that. I got to do that today. Um, good thing you reminded me because I had I had to do two little voiceover things. Which You're just, welcome. But I did that. Uh, Mario Lopez is a, an executive producer on that. Um, Believe it or not, his hair and makeup guy is the guy who wrote this. And it's an awesome role. I go out the beard. I got the shades, head with the shades, jewelry. It's a good, good, good part. Okay. So you want to keep going, right? You want to keep going in entertainment. Is it, do people kind of, is it like you have a, um, I don't know what the. I just wanted to mention one more thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I also did another film with the girl from The Sopranos, Jamie Lynn Sigler. Oh, she yeah, yeah. wife in a film called I'm on Fire. I'm a very, I'm an abusive dad. Got the mustache. Takes place in the 80s. Like I'm, I beat my kid up. I'm like a bad dude. And the song, the reason why it's called I'm on Fire, you know the song by Springsteen? Of course. Hey, he gave us the song for the film because he was abused. So yeah, he, that. He's so interesting. Oh my God. He, at, like his life and everything and what he's been through and how he, yeah, yeah. yes, has wanted to rise you know, above and help everybody. And this yeah. is something else I'm going to be doing. Faction of a hitman. I didn't wear it for this because I want to take a picture after and I want to send it to the writer because he uh -huh. wants it. But uh, this is going to be with uh, Ray Liotta. We're supposed to, you know, we're supposed to be shooting. You got to be organized, Karen. Okay. Can <laughs> I just organized, Karen? So wait, back. Hold on. I have to cut you off for a second. I I need a favor. He is my dream guest. I've been saying it for years. I ran into him once at the Tribeca Film Festival and I was like my tongue tied. I didn't even know how to talk to him and I never get that way. And I would love to have him on the show. I've talked about it a million times. Everybody knows when they say like, who's the dream guest? It's Ray Liotta. You gotta book him on my show. You know what? So let me see. I mean, I, listen. I'll do you the favor. It's not a problem. I don't really mean to ask you to do it. I really, I don't even mean it. Put it this way. 50% of the favor is already done because I'll do it. Now we got to see if, if, you know. Yeah, because you know what? He seems like an interesting guy to me, just like Bruce Springsteen, where like I, people who have a, a like an interesting, rich history, that's not always that easy or that simple. I think it, it doesn't always, but it can really turn you into a very thoughtful and interesting person. And I just get that vibe from him. I think that he has that kind of thing. And I just feel like there's so much, you know, and I just see that in you too. It's like, there's really so much, so much complexity behind like what you may see on the surface. And I'm just, I'm really interested in that. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, yeah. Um, but you know, the fifth borough, um, you know, it was great working on that. Great working with Steve again. I mean, you saw he gave me a really great part. And, uh, you know, Steve's my boy, man. I really, I love him genuinely. He's a really good guy. And he's always, you know, been straight up with me, always straight up with him. And uh, I consider him a friend, not just yeah. a company, but someone I work with. And I've, I'd love to work with him in the future a million more times. And you know? I, bet, I bet you will. So I'm going to put a link anyway. Everybody who's uh, watching the show and listening to the show, they'll be able to link to Fifth Borough really easily because you can get it on demand, which is uh, easy to catch. So I'll make sure I do that. And then we mentioned your other project. So what is that Ray Liotta project? I cut you off in the middle of it. It's called The Faction of a Hitman. Um, it takes place in the 70s. Do you know the Bonanno crime family? Do you uh -huh. remember? In the 70s, they went out west. Joe Bonanno, he eventually settled in Arizona. That's where he went. But in the 70s, the Bonanos made their way out there. And uh, they opened up a cheesecake factory. That's where they did all their business through and they laundered their money. And, but you gotta understand, you go out west, this takes place in San Jose. That's where it actually happened. The guy who wrote it was part of it. His father, you know, this gentleman right here, a Chicano Mexican guy, but it was his father was involved with these guys. So he was there. And uh, Leota is going to play Joe Bonanno Jr. He's playing Gianni Russo, Carlo Rizzi from The Godfather. He plays Joe Sr. And Ray Leota is playing Jr. Uh, so that, play that's an interesting story, story too, with him and uh, what's that? 
Yeah, no, with uh, Ritchie. Follow Ritchie. Yeah, with uh, Sonny. With why am I? I'm like forgetting his name. Why? Why am I forgetting his James name? James Con. Yes, James Con. James Con, another dream guest of mine. James Con. I worked exactly. with him. I worked with him on a movie called In the Shadows. Uh, how was he? He seems good. Yeah, he was great. Like a regular guy, right? The real deal. Guy. He's a knock around guy. If you didn't know him and you just met him, you would think he, if he said I was a made guy, if he was an organized, like a crime, organized crime guy, believe it in two seconds. It's a bunch of Marlboro Reds. He's, you know, he's so tough funny. guy. He's tough All right. Guy. He's All right. So James Conn. He's a no tough guy. No, he's a real life tough guy. James Conn. Like, yeah, he's really that. He's really like that, you know? Yeah. But, uh, and I love him. Um, so you've read the script. You're all set to do it, but obviously it hasn't gone into production yet. No. Obviously, you know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're sort of like uh, at home right now, but eventually it will, and you'll you'll do your thing. Well, we're supposed to start in the end of June for like you know three weeks. I'll be there for three weeks because I'm not the lead, but I got a nice role. Um, so they said three weeks a month because I think they might want me to go a week early. You ask me, I don't think it's going to start then. You know, I've been doing this since I'm 15 years old. I'm 44. You know, and I. I know what goes on and I know that SAG is more powerful than anybody. This could be a Steven Spielberg film and Scorsese, it could be Spielberg and Scorsese co-directing. If SAG comes on the set, those two men will get worried. Because SAG could look at one thing and say, look at that wire not covered. Don't you know that people walk there? You know what? Let's shut this down. You guys are done for the day. Steven, so these guys are not going to do anything. So because of that, you think like SAG is doing this this is, you know, August 1st is when it's, everything opens up again for a reason. This is, we're, we're saying this date for a reason. You're not going to do that before. This is a SAG film. But yeah, it'll happen. It's, but SAG is going to decide everything, it sounds like. So, okay, I know. So we'll, I know I'm going to be relaxing this summer. Yeah, that's what yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll be uh -huh. safe, and that's what's good, right? You want to be yeah. safe. Like I had the corona. You did? I had corona in March, you know? But I had the minor symptoms. I had, I had body aches. I had chills like I've never had in my life. And it wasn't even that cold. My teeth were going, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. It wasn't even that cold. Back aches, this, that. I was a little scared, but you know what? When I got shot, I lost my spleen, which is a lymph node, the biggest one in your body. Once that is gone, your immune system becomes very, very compromised. Your biggest soldier, your biggest fighter is gone. So now it's like, oh my God. My doctor back then when I was incarcerated told my mother, make sure you let them give him a Pneumovax 23. It's a, a, a Pneumovax, it's a pneumonia vaccine because without the spleen, you can't fight it. The bacterial and the viral have the same characteristics. So why wouldn't the Pneumovax work for a viral? I got it, I didn't get the thing. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so I'm glad Everything you made it is. through. I'm glad you made that's it through. Simple. That. Go get your vaccine for a new. Go get your pneumovax. That's it. It's the bottom line. All you right. Know, I told you. <laughs> Hello. All right. So let's let's wrap up with this question that I'd like to ask. Who, if you were to define yourself or describe yourself, who is Lilo Brancato? Who are you? Lilo Brancato is a Lilo Brancato is someone who, as Chance Palminteri said, made some monumentally bad choices in his life. He has used those bad choices and the repercussions of those bad choices to help others in similar situations like he was in. That's it. Okay, good. So at least. That, huh? that leads me into exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to take some of those life lessons from a Bronx tale and have you reflect on them and tell me what you think of them. So one of them obviously is there's the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. What do you think about that? I think it's, 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 uh, I think it's, I mean, is it the saddest thing? It's definitely one of the saddest things in life. Okay. Cause you know what? A kid dying young, a little baby dying or something. That's the saddest thing in life. When these kids die, they didn't even get a chance to grow. I think that's a little sadder than wasted talent, but that's just me. But wasted talent is one of the, the, the saddest things in life. Okay. And how about the choices that you make will shape your life forever? I've, I've, I've lived that. 
So and another look, truth. That's another truth from not Chaz. I did. Yeah. Chaz is I did, not Ch Chaz. Tell Chaz I'm the real Bronx tale and he's the made up one. Because that's not even his story. He stole that story. What do you what? mean? I'm going to leave that alone. No, no, no. No, wait. Hold on. You have to go there with me. I'm going to tell you why. Because I remember I mentioned Danny Aiello before. So, and he said something like that? So the last time I sat down with Danny, I was actually, the last interview he did was with me. And it was our second. And we were sat down for three hours one afternoon last summer. And one of the things that he mentioned to me was that. And he said, you know, I don't know the whole story, but you could talk to this one and that one, look it up. And I never did. He but stole the script. No, but no, he did, but it wasn't his script. But it, it was his, but it, he, it was a one man story though, a one man show that he wrote. So what do you mean he, it wasn't his script? Listen, you mean the most bus driver and his mother's name was Rose doesn't mean all the other stuff was true. So how do you know that? Like, what do you mean? a script around Lilo and Domenica Brancato. Lilo was a construction guy. Domenico was a housewife. I can go write a story now around them so and change everything but story, that. Whose story is it I'm asking you then? You ha you know something. I want to know what it is. I heard it was a guy Frank's story, Frank Renzulli. That's what Danny me? said. That's what Danny said. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's who it is. Chaz is the Bronx Tim. I'm a stand-up guy. But so how he did you hear that? From the beginning, and he's still a fraud. They should call it the fraud tale. That's what he is. He's a real fraud. I don't care about saying it. The guy kicked me when I was at my lowest. Why should I be nice? Or if even people say, oh, you shouldn't say that. You don't know what I went through, bro. You don't know. My, my father's partially dead because of assholes like that kept beating me up and my father had to see that. If I did it and I killed someone, then you say, you know what? You're a piece of shit. The young cop got killed. You shot the guy. I didn't kill the guy. Come on. You know the situation. Yeah. All these people that want to talk, oh, yeah, you killed the cop. And I said, really? Let me ask you a question. You know I didn't do it, right? You know I didn't have the gun. I want to ask you a question. The guy who did do it, you know, it was another guy. Do you know his name? Oh, uh, uh, they don't even know. So why are you showing such concern, like you know this cop personally, and that's like personally bothering you? Because if you did, if it did, you would know the guy Stephen Armento's name as soon as I asked you for it. No, uh, you're full of shit. You know, you're full of shit. But doesn't right. mean I'm still not going to be a nice guy, and doesn't mean I'm still not going to help people because I use these douchebags to fuel the fire inside me and for that fire to help all the people. That's what it's all, that's what God wanted. I could have been dead, it could have been away from it, but I'm here because he wants me to be. For that reason, I'll leave it alone. All right, what about the, the uh, door test? What do you think of it? The door uh, test, you know what I'm talking about? What, you can't even do that anymore because like when you with the alarm, you know, like, um, there's other things like the door test, like, you know what it is? It's personally like when you look at something like that, like she didn't even open the door. Basically what he's saying is that is an extension of who she is. But he said it beautifully. You're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. That was great for that. And I loved when he said, let me get back. He says, you only allowed three great women in your lifetime. He goes, I had my three when I was 16. It happens. That was great. I <laughs> had my three when I was 16. It happens. So, okay. okay, ready? What about it's yeah. better? What about it's better to be feared than loved? Is it better to be loved or feared? My answer to that is better to be loved. Okay. okay. And the last one is um, the working man is a sucker. No, definitely not. My father was the hardest working guy in the world. He's a sucker. Come on. Come okay, on. Good. My father was one of the toughest guys I know. When my father was in his prime, my father would have beat street guys up. My father was an old school Italian guy that would work and broke his back day after day after day after day after day. Hands swollen, back broken, everything never stopped. That's a, that's a song, the furthest thing in the world. Furthest thing in the world. That's, come on, that's real tough. Okay, um, so the question, the last question I guess I have is, so I feel like in your position, you would probably hate the idea of having to do an interview because you've been represented the way that you have publicly. Like, did, is that how you felt coming into this interview? Like, oh, I don't really even want to deal with it because I didn't get that from you at all. But I would, I could oh. see what, how you would feel like that. Listen, <clears throat> I'm not a fake guy. Um, you know, I've been for five years. Like I said, I've been nothing but respectful to Chaz and to law enforcement to everyone because I felt that was the best way to handle this. You know, and I know I did make bad choices. So, you know, listen, I fully take full responsibility. 
you know, but it's like, I take my time out of my day one time. I go to Jersey to talk to these kids in a high school. I didn't get paid for it. I just went because I thought these kids, you know, need, there was a lot of drugs in that area. And I said, you know what? I may be able to go there today and change the one kid's life in that whole auditorium. And I'd be more than worth it, you know? And I go there and dressed up and I really made an effort to look presentable. So these kids would really listen to me and I could make a difference in their lives. You know what these cops said over there? They bashed me. They were crazy. Right message, wrong messenger. You know what that tells me? You don't give a fuck about this community. You care about yourself and your boys in blue. This is not about the community. That's where your real obligation should be. You're there to protect and serve. Not to collaborate and do bad shit. You're here to protect and serve the community. These kids in this audience are part of your community. Who else is going to tell these kids about this kind of stuff? You're going to get somebody who's never been through it? Huh? Where do you, where, how are you going to get people to, you need someone who's been there. How do you have the, the audacity to bash me after I took time out of my day in hopes of helping people and I'm wrong? I'm the bad guy? Why doesn't that shit get written up in another way? Like, look at these scumbag cops bashing this kid who's been nothing but a gentleman and try to help people. Listen, two years ago, I would never be saying this stuff. I handled it totally different. And you know what? No one seems to give a shit. So you know what? I don't either anymore. But I'm never going to get high again. I'm still going to continue to help people. But it's like, why respect those that don't respect you? You know, the golden rules is respect others as you would have, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I do unto others as they do unto me, not as I would like them to do unto me. Life is too short to be spreading yourself so thin and being ground nosy and this. Just be real, be authentic. I'm the type of guy, if it's cold and you want a jacket, I'll give you my jacket. I've always been like that. I'm a real guy, I'm a genuine guy. I don't know how people don't see that. I just wanna, just wanna help. I wanna help my family. My dad's dead, I'll help my mom. You know, like the best, the, the best apology is changed behavior. I've changed. I've helped. You know what I mean? Like, what more of an apology do you want? Right? You see that? You know what that symbolizes? This symbolizes the cross, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, where Jesus Christ got nailed to a cross for forgiveness of sins. Okay? This is what this symbolizes. This is the very foundation of Roman Catholicism. You're a Catholic, right? You see me home six years, nothing but a gentleman. And you could honestly say, you know what? Maybe my brother's life didn't go to a total waste. Maybe this guy, maybe my brother was his angel that died for this kid to do what he's doing. How many times I get kids, mothers call me, Lilo, thank you so much. You saved my kid. Or Lilo, my kid died, but thank you anyway. That's what it is. This is what I do. You know what I mean? This is what I do. Work for health companies. I, this is what I do. And I'm going to open my own rehab. But it's crazy because these it takes so long to get the license. And they're such in demand right now. It could be years, but I am going to have one, like a dual diagnosis, like a mental health, you know, basically a treatment provider for those struggling with mental health and substance abuse disorders. I was doing outreach work, but like I'm living proof that you can do it. And that's why I stay in shape and post these pictures with my shirt off. It's not when you tell people, it's when you show them. When you're addicted and you're, these drugs are in you, they tell you you're never going to be better again. I got you. You'll never be what you were, but I am going to show you that you can living proof. And this woman should be like, you know what? Enough is enough. I think this kid's really proven that he's changed. And I should go, I should go just talk to him and get to know him as the person and tell him, thank you for what he's done for all these kids. And, uh, you know, just stay out of trouble because it's, you know, the shit that you did and got my brother killed. I know it wasn't you. This is what a good person does. But now I'm supposed to be like at your mercy and you just keep fucking kicking me after all these years. If I was out there saying, fuck you and fuck this one and fuck me, I never did that. I'm too smart for that. I've been nothing but respect. I always go out of my way to put you guys first. You know what I mean? And take responsibility, but you still, it, like when is it gonna end, man? Like seriously, when is it gonna end? I lost my father, Parsh. My father, when I got in trouble, he had to get a heart transplant, okay? That medication, that anti-rejection medication, gave him diabetes and the diabetes gave him neuropathy. That's why he fell because he had no strength in his legs, broke his hip. You know what I mean? So like this is like, yeah, I understand your family was affected, but so was mine. 
And you guys came at me like I was the one who actually did it. And it just doesn't end, you know? And believe me, it, like I said, there's not a day that goes by, I don't think about that night. Now I wish I could change that and that kid would still be alive. That's what I would want more than anything because I live with that. I want to give you credit. Like, I feel like you've been really working hard for a long time. It's not just something you've done for a year or whatever, like everything we were just talking about, like it's been for a long time and I can tell, I know you want to be authentic and I feel like you are. Um, I get, and I sense it, part of that is what you have on screen too. It's like, I think it's part of that authenticity and being genuine. So I really do. I mean it. And I'm being authentic when I say that. Thank you. I appreciate that. But follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of nice quotes and a lot of inspirational. So I've actually been approached by people in the street. I swear my dead father. Oh, I follow you on Instagram, bro. Really, man. Thank you so much for some of those quotes. I swear some bad should happen to my nieces if I'm lying. I have been approached for that reason many times because everything like I go through all, I don't just post stuff. Everything I post is because I went through it myself. And I try to remember that exact day where I was feeling that exact thing when that happened, because then I always put a little caption that adds and how it applied to me and how it has affected my life. These and words. you write everything. You do it all yourself. Obviously you write yeah, all yeah. the captions, whatever. Or yeah. yeah. Actually, no, saw a girl named Kara. Oh, really? Yeah. She's from uh, Long Island. She's Greek. Cala Kara Calabacus. Uh, with a K or a C? Would like you, okay. Oh, very nice, very nice. By the yeah. way, are there any impressions that you didn't do today that you feel like you should do? Because you're really good at impressions. I don't oh. mind putting another one up there. I don't want to do De Niro. Um, I don't know. Do somebody you didn't do yet. <clears throat> so I should, uh, uh, yeah, sure, why not? You know who that is? I don't know who that is. Who's that? Oh, give that me a was, hint. That was Pantangeli from The Godfather. Oh, of course. Like, the way he says, uh, uh, yes. The way he says, what? So he's, uh, they said Michael Corleone did this, and uh, Michael Corleone did that. So I says, uh, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. That guy was awesome. That was a character. Frankie Five Angels. Oh, he was great. Yeah, I think, by the <laughs> way, I think it was, uh, I think Danny Aiello had a part that had to, that his guy had something to do with him. Uh, yes, yes. Danny Aiello played a character. He was one of the Rosado brothers. Yeah, yeah. The Rosados yeah. were the Gallows, the Gallo brothers, Larry and Joe. He's inside the thing when they bring Frankie in. I remember, remember when he goes, and when he goes, Michael Corleone says hello, when he chokes him, yeah. and then he tells him, close the fucking door. I did a play with ILO. I know, uh, but also he didn't, that he made up that line. He just said it for no reason. Michael Corleone says hello? Yes. Well, he didn't so even know why. He says, I have no idea why I said it. It just came out of my mouth. It was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah, so Francis Ford Coppola kept it in. Yeah, no, that was, that movie's unbelievable. Yeah. You know? All right. So um, last thing is, can you look at the camera? I want to just have some sort of like a clip to run. Look at the camera and say, hi, I'm Lilo Broncado. I just talked to Kara. And then say anything you want. Your choice. Okay. But just make sure you look at the camera. How you doing? My name is Lilo Broncado and I just spoke to Kara. And uh, going in any interview, you don't know what to expect. Um, and that's the way I approached this one. But I can honestly say that I was, I was, I had never once didn't feel comfortable being myself. Uh, she's a great interviewer and I really had a great time today being myself, which is what I like to be. That's amazing. I love that. Thank you. I, that means a lot to me too. If you really meant it, which I think that you do. I do. What is, I'm just telling you Chaz is a fraud. I mean, I don't I tell know. everybody. I know, but I love it. And I want you to be just a piece of shit and he's a fraud. I can't believe I think about my father sitting in front of that TV. Like, I don't care about Chaz. He's a, he's a, he's a nobody. Come on, bro. really, he's a zero. You can tell him he's a zero. Yeah, I mean, I, I, Hurley Burley. You want to see how good of an actor he is? Watch him in the movie Hurley Burley with Kevin Spacey. Who else was in there? Oh, Sean Penn. And you'll see the levels of Sean Penn and Kevin Spacey. And then you see this bum down here. He's a bum. He really is a bum. By the way, Sean Penn is super talented too. Oh, Sean Penn's one on. of the best that's ever done it. The best. You know, Dave Sean Kleinfeld Penn. to Jeff Spicoli. You know what I mean? 
So good, so good. All right, all right. <laughs> right. So good. All right, so I guess we'll cut it here. I think you are authentic and I'm always looking for that. And I'm glad you felt the way that you did, so. Thank you, Kara, I really appreciate that. Okay, cool. Thank you for letting me be myself. If you like this video, please make sure you smash that like button and tap on subscribe for more Real Talks with your favorite celebrities. If you didn't like it, that's okay. Make sure you tell all your friends to check out Really Famous with Kara Mayer Robinson. They're the worst videos ever. You gotta check them out. Thanks for watching. See you soon.